Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first, <coughs> I would like to thank you for the invitation to speak here at the Symposium of Pamplona. Necessary architecture is the given theme. Not the old, not the new, but the necessary. After a long professional career with Annette, I can only agree with this quote from Tatlin, thinking about the necessity of architecture and its importance in today's society is now more important than ever. In the context of three different statements, I will show you 11 selected projects from our office in the last 25 years. Each statement will be accompanied by a film which we have installed um, which uh, uh, which will be accompanied by a film which we have shown with many others in a large exhi exhibition, as you show it there on the right slide, at the ETH in Zurich in 2011. Films for us are the most important way to show the interactions of people, space and time in a newly constructed building. Our architecture. Until the end of the 19th century, traditional building forms and styles were built. In the first half of the 20th century, there was the functionalism of the classical modernists, the constructive, space defining, and proportional considerations were the artistic themes. The postmodernists, deconstructivists and neo-modernists reacted in various forms. Now, we are working in a time of endless digital image, imaginary and self-realizations. This focus in itself does not lead to superior or more important work. Instead, it creates often a large uncertainty. We don't believe in the tabula rasa, but rather on the further development of what is already available to us. We are inspired by the world around us. We are looking for ideas and concepts that go beyond the contextual approach and provide a superior contribution to our cultural environment. We are looking for spaces in our own world of ideas which are anchored primarily in the present and not derived from a, from a tradition. We draw the inspiration from the interest in our present environment. In today's world of anything goes, we need the sustainability of concepts so that we have a chance to survive. We try to analyze each assignment and explore whether the chosen concept embodies the very essence of the task. With logical implementation of the concept, specific buildings are produced. We are not interested in repeating the work of Shigonguya architects. The means and strategies of implementation are all about the same, but with innovative interpretation of the various tasks, new solutions will be achieved. The creative process is often is often a simply adaption and interpretation of what one finds. In any case, the freedom of self-directed perception is very important to us, and I guess also to a lot of you, precisely because it represents the beginning of the creative process. This museum, I guess the most of you know it, is a space for the work of the painter Kirchner that we built 25 years ago. The floor plan contains four rectangular exhibition rooms and an intermediate hall space. A well-proportioned room with white walls, a wooden floor, 
and an entire ceiling of light was designed as an ideal space for exhibiting work. As a contrast, the hall is a branched, complex space visible to the outside world and fully formed in concrete. The hall is a transition between the rectangular space, exhibition spaces, and in between these volumes, views are provided to the outside world. High lantern spaces control the daylight falling on the horizontal glass ceiling of the exhibition rooms regulated by internal fins. In this room, artificial lighting, as you see, it is also provided. And the hall is significantly lower than the exhibition rooms. Glass in different states form the building envelope. Transparent glass in the hall windows, edge glass for the lateral structures, and translucent cast glass as cladding with visible insulation. Because of the top view, the roof is covered like a fifth facade with recycled glass. The cubic composition of the higher exhibition rooms and of the lower hall take, takes on a crystal-like appearance through the light-sensitive glass. This museum we just uh, designed about 20 years ago. An elongated volume with a checked silhouette relates to the traditional roofscape of the village, but as you see, it stands out with its light shimmering metal skin. A linear arrangement of rooms forms the floor, plat the floor plan of the linear museum. The middle double wall uh, supplies all of the necessary technical requirements. The skylights grow with the increasing width of the spaces and give the characteristic silhouette. Each room has a skylight orientated to the north and is thereby an actual light chapel. Some single windows give the visitor's view outside and enrich the natural lighting of the rooms. These openings occur as framed views in the metal facade and act like eyes. At both ends of the building, large candelivered window rooms can be seen, such as the entrance or the library. Matte sandplastic stainless steel panels are assembled as large shingles overlapping each other. The metal wall and roof envelope lend the volume a powerful aura with its sensitivity to light and its material presence. The Albers Honecker donation, Espace de l'Art Concret, in, this, in Monsartung, this, in the south of France, is a vertical tower with a little ground space which is carefully fitted into the trees in a dense forest beside an old castle. Different projections give the volume a high degree of e expressivity. The exterior walls are constructed in load-bearing concrete, which are painted with a matte yellow-green mineral color. In the strong southern light, the building is lit from the dark green Mediterranean forest. The half-story staggered floors are like the platforms of a large stair which determines the vertical circuit in this museum. The building is entered through an entranceway that is configured like a bridge. The exhibition spaces, as you see it in the section, have different sizes and height. The spaces are arranged around a central core with a lift and emergency staircases and are connected to each other through the open stairs you see on the left and the right part of the core. The attached rooms increase the floor area in different ways. 
a view of the main entrance that acts like a spur to the main building and a view of the small exhibition space on the ground floor. On the journey through the museum, the differently orientated windows bathe the showrooms in different types of light, from the cool north to the warm southern light. The rooms have different heights, different depths, sizes, allowing therefore also different exhibition installations. In front of the internal window, glass planes slightly extend out of the facade and reflect the environment in contrast to the dull colored surface of the concrete facades. The windows as a given element correspond with the interior and are arranged freely in the facade. This site plan shows the design of an archaeological museum and an archaeological park. It's an interesting project because it's half landscape design and half architecture. It shows the various routes, the museum, the pavilions, and the visitor center. The reason for its foundation is a decisive battle where the Romans were defeated uh, by the Germans for the first time, and this marked the beginning of an independent development of the German people. It was the Battle of Varus. The first charts show the, the reproduction of the vegetation of the formal landscape through deforestation and reforestation. It shows the road networks, the paths of the Romans and the Germans. It shows the situation of the agriculture of today. It shows the buildings, the museum, and the pavilions. And in the last diagram, all are superimposed onto one another, creating the realized situation plan. The museum consists of a horizontal part, as you see it here, where the findings of the excavations are exhibited. And an observation tower, 40 meters high, from where you can look down on the former battlefield and the topographical conditions. The building on columns hovers above the valuable ground. It's the ground where still ongoing excavations are happening. The museum and the tower are steel structures which are clad with stainless weatherproof plates, huge plates in the height of uh, five meters by two meters in width. And the skeletal structure of the tower is visible behind the steel plates. As you see, the double story spaces are accessible by the al alternating stairs and serve also as quite well um, used exhibition areas. The viewing platform at the top is located, and you see there is also an elevator uh, going down in the corner, going up and down in the corner. Here you see on the left, on the, left the rusty weather resistant steel plates, on the right, the flamed raw steel plates as panels for the indoor cladding of the indoor spaces. The entrance hall is a flexible in use and can be divided for lectures and educational introductions. Large windows give the room multiple orientations. The exhibition is staged with artificial lights. The exhibition space is actually a kind of a black box. It documents the course of the battle the cultures of the Romans and Germans, and chose the findings from the ongoing excavations combined with research 
and explanation texts. In the park, in the archaeological park, there is a clearly defined decrease in height where the swamp, the embankment and the retreat grounds have been reconstructed. A view into the past. In parallel, free pavilions provide an enhanced contemporary perception of the battlefield. Here you see the pavilion, we call it seeing, which projects the location of the tragic event onto a large frosted glass ball by means of an obscured camera. In the pavilion listening, the outside noises can be tracked in a sound absorbing uh, space on an oversized sized ear trumpet which is turnable. In the pavilion understanding, at the end of the tour, we can look back through slits to the battlefield while being confronted simultaneously with monitors, with film clips of current instances of war. The aerial view of the then existing buildings and the diagrams of the various expansion stages showing how the Museum of Transport Switzerland should be uh, replaced gradually. The competition of this project was in uh, 99, 98, 19, uh, 99. The model shows uh, the entrance building and the house of transport with the intermediate arena as an external event and exhibition space. The entrance building is a high quality multifunctional building. The reception, a shop, a restaurant on the ground floor a big exhibition about modern media and communication on the first floor, a convention center with a large hall on the third floor. All types of wheels are on display behind the vertical floor high cast glass elements, referring to the contents of the museum and showing an amazing diversity of wheels. The windows penetrate the facade as framed standalone elements, the glass facade as a showcase of the wheel is already the first exhibition when you come close to the building. The first, the ground floor, is an open area with large windows to allow transparency and entry. Immediately after entering, countless screens can be seen in the tall entrance hall on the first floor where the communication exhibition takes place. This is a model of the first project for the House of Transport we did uh, in the first competition entry, where the ramps for the visitors, but also for the cars around the whole building and the halls um, are characterized in raw concrete by a supporting structure with few static elements and large spans. The low budget available lead to a radical simplified volume that would become covered in a first layer with pressed staked car racks, as you see it here below on the left side. The reaction of the major car manufacturers who acted as sponsors was extre extremely reluctant. Finally, we have then the hall covered with the big white, blue and green traffic signs of the highway uh, signage. The crude dressing of the signs, which are staked and particularly cantilevered over the roof and the building corners immediately give the volume a thematic re relevance. In the last 10 years, we have worked on this resi residential development in Geneva with different standards in property and rent over, the, over several stages. The staggered buildings 
uh, building bodies are located with great caution between the group of trees in this wonderful park. The first stage, there are three-story, horizontally structured, high-quality corporate, cooperative apartments with a mezzanine on the ground floor. The staircase allows access from two to five homes. The apartment type is a contemporary interpretation of the urban bourgeois living in Geneva, a separate day and night zone clearly defined bedrooms, a spatial sequence of living, library, and eating with an attached kitchen. You see here the living rooms with large sliding windows and the outdoor areas with lochas and balconies. Colored large concrete elements constructed as sandwich elements are joined together vertically and horizontally with openings in a classical way. The outdoor areas are part of the building volume. Thanks to a new strategy of densification, a few years afterwards, the city, uh, of the city, significantly higher houses could be built in the second stage. As a compensation to the larger area usage, smaller and cheaper rental apartments and condominiums were designed. The free houses form an ensemble step at different heights, located precisely to one another. This two-story garage connects the three volumes underground. An outside space with the house entrances is clearly defined. A high-quality environment is creating, utilizing large groups of trees, organic hills, and sweeping paths. Six to ten apartments are organized around two naturally lit staircases. Living room, kitchen, dining areas are arranged together with balconies and lochas on the corner of the building. The different sized apartments are combined with furnished uh, studios. The living room with the two-sided orientation and the balcony and a second project we just finished last year, a housing development in Ulster. It's a residential development in a small town near Zurich between a beautiful pond and a stream that originally supplied the energy of the former industrial land. Two elongated building, buildings follow the terrain and the river course with their kinks and form with the existing building on the west, a common courtyard. The higher building has a panoramic view into the Alps on the upper floors looking over the lower building along the stream. Towards the east, the buildings come closer together and form a head situation on the side. In the plains, in the plans, it's the ground floor, the kinks are less sharp in the facades and balconies. You see that two or three apartments are accessible per staircase. All the apartments, 150, are for rent. Towards the pond, the kinked facade moves in rhythm with the large alley trees. In the courtyard, the front buildings with their covering entrances and bicycle parking from gar form gardens for the ground floor apartments. The apartment type on the taller building at the pond has a through living room with a narrowing in the middle. The kitchen and the dining are located on the north with the view on the, on the, on the pond. The living with the balcony is orientated to the south. In the lower building at the stream, 
the shift of the living uh, creates a clearly defined living and dining room. Through the alternating kinks, generous balconies with different depths are created. Different protected outdoor areas can be created with curtains. Prefabricated white pigmented concrete elements with varying whole structures form detached transpar transparent balustrades facing the south and parapet uh, panels towards the north, the east and the west. The horizontal structure with these bright concrete stripes and the vertical natural wood paneling dominates the external appearance of the two buildings. The courtyard with the branching covered areas and the large conifer is the center of this residential development. The importance of spaces and materials. The three classical principles of Vitruvius architecture Firmitas, stability, utilitas, usefulness, venusvas, harmony, are no longer as valuable to us as they once were. However, it makes sense to discuss utilitas and firmitas here. Today, new buildings are often commissioned by clients with a certain lifetime in mind. The Western myth of the permanent structure as sustenance for tradition and culture is called into question. Contemporary materials are often available in different conditions and in various states and are used in association with fastening systems, joining materials and waterproofing. Today's buildings are a mixture of raw materials and these joining materials and the later they dictate the age of the building. This is especially evident in the layers of the building envelope, which is a result of the increasingly stringent thermal, thermal insulation requirements. By dividing the facade into a colder outer and a warmer inner layer, the elevations of the buildings lose their visual, visual strength as they are replaced by a composite system. Because of this division of the floor, the wall, the ceiling, we believe that the new kind of firmitas and utilitas must be achieved by intensifying spaces with character and experiential quality, where uses can unfold in a manner to which was never thought of, where people feel comfortable the rooms will survive longer. The materials relating to space are very important. We believe that architecture should address all human senses, not just the visual, but also the tactile, the smell, the hearing. There is a certain atmosphere that we want to achieve with space, design, surface, material and light. We want to build spaces with layered spatial experience. It is not the individual material itself that is interesting, but rather the coming together of materials where the essence of architecture unfolds. The different emphasis and intensification of places, the composite nature and skillful mixing of materials of different origins are the contemporary challenges of architecture for us today. The physical presence of architecture is more important to us than the representation. Our built designs should be better than the representative renderings of the project. Facades should trigger emotions, they should be visually appealing, and they should say something about the content of the building. We use the power of the material, the tectonics, the color, the surface, and even the typography to achieve that. 
the prime tower, the main building we did the last five years, is an office tower, is located at the intersection, you see there the red marked triangle of a sprawling train track and the bridge of a ring road at the corner of Zurich. The west quarter, the most dynamic developing area in the last 10 years in Zurich. The ensemble consists of four buildings on a triangular site. The tower is located in the middle with its free form angled plane, a plan. The series of models you see here show above on the top the pragmatic dull output model and the development until to the final architectural models below. The emphasis on required ratio of well exposed usable space to floor area resulted in a search for towers with a larger facade area. The shape of the floor is a hexagonal polygon, so it fitted with the surroundings at the same time reached a maximum facade surface area. This resulted in a volume which achieved from every angle a, pre a different presence. It's actually that. When we look at the sections, we see the different depths, and you see it's it can be, as on the left, look like a tower, but it can be at the same time as on the right, a slab. You see also the, the tower is getting uh, larger with, uh, on, the, on the upper floors. There are larger projections uh, up, uh, on the smaller sides of the tower, and there are no narrower project projections on, on the uh, larger sides uh, positioned on a, a deeper position. The four points of view show the various appearances of the tower in the city. The vertical volume is shaped by the different reflections. Reflections which show the body of the city, but also of the surrounding hills. At closer viewpoints, the different projections of the volume play a greater role. The kinked glass surfaces with their playful light reflections and shades have a great impact on the perception of the volume. The four buildings form a central square, an access area to the tower, and the beginning of a road into the depth of the area. The platform, as you see in it written here, is a, is a, is a horizontal building an office building with an atrium and setbacks. You will see it in the film at the end. The diagonal is an existing building which was remodeled and renovated. And the Kubus is a building that deals with delivery services in, for the entire area on the ground and having working lofts on the upper floors. The candy levers break the verticality of the hundred 26 meters of the tower and takes references to the roof lines of the surrounding buildings. It arises in order to lend the tower a sense of scale which would be not provided by one continuous glass facade. The main entrance is defined with a projecting volume and the recesses in the glass facade. The entrance hall is high and branched. It, it extends, as you see it here on the floor plan, throughout the depth of the building with revolving doors, multi multiple orientations, seating, reception, security gates to the elevator lobby. The green natural stone cladded core walls dominate the entrance hall additionally supported by a bright terrazzo floor and a white ceiling. The standard floor configuration of the offices allows a wide variety of office layouts and tenant improvements. 
a subdivision into a maximum of four rental units is possible. Slanting supports make the cantilevers structurally possible. The floor to ceiling windows are divided into a grid of 140. The floor is a continuous hollow slab. The ceiling is equipped with sound absorbing panels providing warmth and cold. The tower, as you see it in the section, has four large tenants that occupy up to eight different floors and other smaller tenants who have from a quarter to of a story up to two stories as a surface. Two-story entrance halls, as you see there on the right above, as well as internal staircases were possible within the structure. We could realize about the half of the tenant building outs, which serve mainly for financial services, lawyers, and advising companies. On the top two floors, there is a restaurant, a bistro, a bar with lounge, a reference, a conference center, and a large kitchen. Over a thousand people are visiting the two top floors every day through a separate circulation system. The glazed facade is very efficient against the warmth and the cold. It is a triple glazed and has specially designed internal fins which reflect back a large part of the solar light. About 10% of the heat assembling in the interior has to be cooled away, cooled away. The greenish glass which gives the main appearance of the building acts as a first reflection shield against the sun radiation. At dawn, the appearance of the tower changes. The greenish, slightly reflective facade disappears and the building structure with its ceiling and pillars can be seen with internal lighting. At the same time, we realized together with David Chipperfield and Mark Studler, this large office building in form of a high density perimeter block with a courtyard. It is divided in four parts. They are connected to each other with multi-story bridges, each technologically different. The building is part of a new city district just next to the main station of Zurich. A, facade, a, a, a facetted glass facade with textile insert is the expression of our building, next or in the middle of an environment of mainly stone buildings. The super block is 32 meters high with two basement floors. On the left, you see in the section the bridges, on the right, the building depth of 22 meters, so it's a very dense building. On the ground floor are the entrances to the public, to the offices, on the upper floors, mainly conference rooms or offices are located. This is a view of the courtyard, which is highly urban, which has a fountain in the middle, and which is trans, uh, traverse, traversable in all directions. The passages with the bridges are reminiscent of drawings of Pirandesi. On the left, you see the coffee place, the coffee shop and its environment. On the right, the common corridor connecting all the four buildings on the first floor. The facade, as you see it there on the right, is a double layered facade with an inner continuous insulated glass and an outer layer of laminated glass, glass with fabric inserts. The panels are positioned in different angles. In between these two layers, there is a natural ventilated space with a textile sun protection. 
a slightly golden shimmering fabric uh, reacts, as you see, it's very sensitive to light, also because of these different uh, uh, angles of the, of the glass panels. And the, resu the result is in a really clear world, a curtain wall. The formal industrial area was transformed into a public park and now is this office of the Wirt Group, which is directly located on the Lake of Constance in the north of Switzerland, besides the railway station. The building complex is elongated, differentiated with various projections and supplied with a faceted glass envelope on all the sides, but this time with a silver fabric insert. This is the ground floor with the section. There is a training center with, large, with a large hall on the left, which can also be used for high quality uh, concerts. It's also a public accessible um, room. There is a patio in the middle which is the center, the visual focused center um, of, the, of the building. You see it here, there are generous stairs, designate the entrance hall. The view on the right side into the patio is from the first floor. There is also a museum just beside the entrance, which shows changing exhibitions of the famous art collection of the Wirt Company. It is accessible to the public. On the first floor, there is a, a coffee, a restaurant, additional internal meeting rooms, as well as this museum. And of course, offices in the upper floor to house the holding company. The building in the park is orientated directly on the lake. The double facade, as you see it here, is a further development from the building I just showed, a double layered facade with this ventilated space in between for maintenance and for, for the vertical textile rulers. The three-dimensional facade you see here with the textile, with the effects the textile inserts produce, with the different uh, lights, with the richness um, of, the, of, the, of the presence, of the visual presence. And it ends in this image of a proverbial curtain wall at the lake. Then the last project I would like to show is this Löwenbräu complex, which is not yet finished. It's still ongoing. It is situated on this former industrial area within a fully developed urban district quite in the center of Zurich. You see on the left side, the existing buildings as we met them when we started designing, and on the right side, the yellow parts, which are the new buildings. A large part of the existing horizontal factory buildings were obtained, and new vertical constructions, heightening and extensing are completed, shown here in yellow. An ensemble of old and new was developed that is uh, for the city quite unique. In plan, you can easily see the juxtaposition of old and new, creating a new multi-use multi neighborhood. You see below in the diagram the art usages marked in yellow in the western part the office usage on the, on the eastern part and in the middle, a little bit in the setback, in the light gray, the housing uh, tower. 
the view from the West showing the increase and expansion of the art uses, the black residential tower in the background, and the red office building as the east enclosure beside the railway viaduct. In the art section, old and new buildings are intertwined with additions, extensions, insertion, in, in, insertions linked to the main entrance. The second entrance, as you see on the right, with the delivery on the courtyard side is a covered outdoor space which is also used as a room for exhibition installations or festivals. The new vertical circulation space with generous stairs becomes the new or is now the new orientation point of all the art institutions and galleries. Large double walls, large double doors mark the entrances to the different levels. In the existing building, the renovated exhibition spaces of the Kunsthalle, a platform for young contemporary art, with a large side light lit elevation, and as an extension, the new exhibition space on the top of the existing building, with a size of 600 square meters, conceived as a free space without columns, with a few windows which can be closed with flexible walls. In the eastern part, orientated to the city center, the two new towers stand directly related to the existing silo buildings and the railway viaduct with the bank. The 70 meter residential tower behind the courtyard has a large candy lever to achieve the necessary floor space in the upper floors. You see that in the cross section of the tower with the, with the candy lever above the old structures. The closed walls on the top floor function as structural beams holding the floors through the columns uh, below. In the longitudinal section, you see the central position of the residential tower in the project. Black ceramic cladding with waving pattern forms together with similar window elements the elevations of the tower on all sides. Taller openings on the ground floor indicate the entrance hall. On the top floor, the penthouse apartments. The bearing structure is made up of the central core in the middle and the external concrete walls around. On a floor there can be two to four apartments of different sizes. The layouts of the apartments are designed after personal demands and vary quite a lot from floor to floor. turn and lift and tilt lift windows as you show it there. They slide up under the ceiling in an integrated guiding rail system and allow very large openings. There are two of them. In the standard offered floor, these windows were combine, combined with an inner glazing to offer a loggia space. But, of course, very often, the loggia was left away to enlarge the living room. The east corner of the plot is occupied by this 40-meter-high office building, which has a red ceramic cladding with wider vertical proliferation. The L-shaped floor plan in the lower floors is scaled down um, in the upper floors, just to this rectangle um, on the corner. The windows, as you see it in the, in the photograph, are doubled with the textile sun protection in between and a closed, narrow opening element for natural ventilation. 
relating to the typical red and yellow clinker elevations of the old buildings, as you see there in the middle of the old uh, industrial buildings, the new special ceramic elements with different proliferation are de were developed, shining in red and blue hues with the finer and the larger proliferation uh, concerning the residential tower and the office building. And at the end, this view of the overall complex viewed from the east, showing the three, the three uh, new buildings and the horizontal layered older structure. The critical state of architecture today. Today's architecture is increasingly determined by market-driven real estate companies who submit all decisions in the pur pursuit of profit. Clients as patrons who carry the full responsibility and see themselves as, a, as part of the society, who are directly accessible and visible to the outside are coming less and less in contact with us. The growing complexity of larger projects, the associated risks and the revived costs and time slots means that these individual clients are seen as increasingly unsustainable to lenders. The public also withdraws more and more the commitment of major project developments due to other political priorities and lack of money and resources, big projects are passed as public-private partnership projects to the private market economy. Market economy considerations often prevail over urban and architectural aspects, although this would clearly benefit society. It is the heyday of the client representatives and the specialists. We as architects no longer present our projects in front of the decision makers, but instead in, in front of the agents who further convey the content and the decisions are made internally without us. This separation between society and this commercially driven architecture should be compensated by giving more care to the experience of architecture in the public. The design of the public plazas, the importance of public ground floors and interiors, as well as the important public circulation routes. In the economic boom that continued until 2008, designing architecture for large institutional buildings was still a desirable goal. Meanwhile, in the present crisis, this is also gone. Although it would be very important to hold on to good architecture to exert an influence on society. We have experienced all this in recent years, especially in relation to the difficulties we had with general contractors during project implementation. We have been teaching and researching now for two years at the ETH in Zurich, alongside with the work we do in the office. And we have come to the conclusion that the focus in the core areas of architecture is really needed. Architecture covers a basic human need. It remains absolutely necessary. No one can take this away from us from us architects, not an economic or another sort of system. But this obligates us to be creative and innovative and to do our best for architecture in society. Thank you for your attention.